Are you ready to learn about task history in Zapier? In Zapier, once you set up your zaps and get your automation running, your task history will show you what actually happened with each zap that ran. It'll show you the data that it got in, the data that it put out at each step. It'll show you if things have been filtered on it. It'll show you if it was successful or not. I'll show you inside of the zaps in my account to give you an idea of what your task history will look like and what you can learn from your task history. In order to find it, you need to go to the clock icon over here that says task history. If you want to understand for your billing what you're actually using your tasks on, going to the task history will be very helpful. You can also see that things are working how you think they are or how you don't think they are by checking in your task history. What we'll look at here is a few of the tasks that I have in progress. When it says success, that means it works every part of it successfully went through. Let's take a look at an example of that. I have a zap that takes my new WordPress posts on my website blog and publishes them automatically to my Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest. What it starts with is finding a new post in WordPress. You see the data in, it says post status and post type published. Then for the data out, it puts all of the information it gathered when it automatically triggered, including the title, date, post ID, name, the entire body of the post, and lots of other data that we're not actually using in the zap. It shows things like the thumbnail, etc. When you want to click back over to data in to minimize it, it's easier to go to the next step. At the next step, we can see what happened after that. And each one of these check marks counts as a task that I'm using in my account. Well, not every single one. However, if it does something like successfully publish, then that does. And it'll show you which one of how many tasks were used at the bottom. As we can see in the lower right, there were three tasks used for this sap, and that's because the trigger does not count. The trigger, when it shows a green check mark, shows that it works successfully. However, each time you do something like publish a page, post, or a tweet, that will count as a task. Therefore, this one zap actually used three different tasks which is important to understand for how many tasks you need for billing. In this Facebook page post one, we can see the data we pulled in. It took the Facebook page, the link URL, and the message, and the data it put out was a specific post ID. With Twitter, you've got the data in that I set in the zap that it should shorten the URL. No, and it has the message. Then it has the data out. It gives you the exact tweet URL it created and the date it was created and the text. Pinterest, you've got the link, the note, and the image URL, and the data out. You can see the exact link to the pin to make sure everything's working. That's an example of everything going successfully in a zap. Let's look at a scenario where we've got a zap that's filtered. A filtered zap means that we set up a filter that we don't want it to continue under certain conditions. In this one, I got a new order on my WooCommerce website for one of my courses, and it was a free coupon. Therefore, I don't want text message notifications with those. The status says, didn't pass filter, because I set up a filter that I don't want a text message notification when someone uses a free coupon. When we look at the data for this, it says data in, order created. If we click on data out, I would see all the customer information that was a part of that order. Next, all I see is this filter with a yellow check mark that says this filter successfully stopped your task. This means that I, while I had to trigger, the task itself didn't run because of the filter I had set up. It shows me the filter number criteria on here, which is that the number was not greater than zero. The criteria I've set up to continue is that the number must be greater than zero, the amount spent must be zero, it was not. Therefore, it didn't continue, and therefore, I did not use any tasks on this zap, which is good. That's what makes this automation valuable. Even though there's a new order, my filter blocked it from actually using a task. When there is an order that's successful, and it will use a task, and it will pass the filter. Things like filters don't count for your task. Here is an example of another action from an order. I've got this WooCommerce new order. 
every time somebody creates an account on my website by placing their first order, the uh, zap triggers for a new customer created. What I do next is I delay before the zap runs. When you first place an order on my website, you will get three different emails. One, confirming your account with a password. Two, with your orders processing. Three, that your order completed. I have an additional information that I want to send after that, beyond what I've already included in the initial emails. However, I don't need to send that immediately. What I do is, as soon as I see a new customer is created, I wait one day, then this task has not sent yet because it hasn't been a day since the new customer actually joined my account. Once the one day is up, this task will proceed and it hasn't used the task yet, I could still cancel it if I wanted to. Once the 24 hours since the customer created their account has passed, which will be in a few hours, then it will go through and do the final step of this zap, which is to send an email saying, hi, thank you for joining my website. Why don't you schedule a call for me? That'll come 24 hours after someone signs up. That's an example of a waiting task. We've looked at success, filtered, and waiting. These are the main statuses you're going to see unless your zaps have errors. If you have an error, which I don't have any zaps for quite a while that have errors because I will make sure to work all the errors out of my zaps. You can check your zaps by specific status. For example, you can look over here. I could pick stopped, errored. I don't have any tasks that have stopped and errored for quite a while. If you look at the default filters, I don't have any that have done that. You can search everything here. You can search for success only. You can search for filtered only. You can search for stopped. You can search for waiting. You can see all the tasks that you do have in progress. You can see waiting scheduled. Don't have any that you can see waiting delayed. The idea of this is to see each step. Now, if you've got some zaps that are having errors, what you do is you click on and read the error message at which step. For example, if you're putting in a zap to add somebody to your email list and they put in an email that doesn't look like it's a valid email address, you'll get an error and the error will say invalid email address. If one of your accounts disconnects, for example, my LinkedIn account used to frequently disconnect before I had my friend Michelle manually publish posts to it, the LinkedIn account would error and say that the account needed to be reconnected. I would get an error in my status and it'd say the account connection is no longer active, please reconnect the account. When you get an error, just go check the error, read the status meshes. Most of the time it's self-explanatory and you can fix it. If it's not, you can contact Zapier support. There's a button right next to the error message. You can contact support and ask, hey, what's going on with this error message? You've got a good look at the task history now, which I imagine will be helpful for you to dive into what's actually going on when your zaps are running to see what your zaps are actually doing and to be successful building the best automations in Zapier.